Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I want to talk to you about one of the most important and misunderstood issues in economics, and it's about this stuff, money. You'd think we all knew what money was, because we all use it all the time. But the truth is, we don't, it would seem. And um, when I say we don't, I mean most economists don't, most politicians don't, and even most bankers don't. And that's pretty worrying when, well, to some extent it's true that money makes the world go round. There are only really two theories of money that we need to worry about. One is an old one, and it ceased to be relevant in August 1971, and I'll tell you why. But it's the one that most people still think is true. People believe that this that note isn't real. They think that somewhere hidden behind that note, there's a pile of gold or silver or something else that gives it value. I hate to tell you that's not true. It was true. That's why I mentioned August 1971. There was a thing called the gold standard. Governments literally couldn't issue money unless they had gold to back it up. And that, of course, was a practical constraint on them to prevent them creating too much money and allowing inflation to run out of hand. That was the theory. But it became a real issue. There wasn't enough money or gold to let the modern economy work. And when America, the USA, wanted more money to fund the Vietnam War, it was getting into a crisis with a shortage of gold. So Richard Nixon, who was president in 1971, abolished the gold standard. We were on a fixed exchange rate with the USA at the time. The pound had a fixed value, didn't change every day as it does now. And so we were effectively on the gold standard too. After August 1971, the world's currencies have no asset backing at all. Physically, this note is worth the same as a piece of paper. It's worthless in itself. It only gets its value because the government has printed on it, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of, in this note's case, £10. It's just a promise to pay. That's all it is. And that's also true, by the way, of the money in your bank account. Because there isn't any of this, yet again, to back that up either. The bank hasn't got a pile of notes to represent the money you have in your bank account if you are in the fortunate position of having money in there. No, it's just a promise. All they've done to you is make a promise. They promised to pay you back the money you pay to them. There's nothing else to the bank account that you hold. It's a promise. In fact, all money is a promise. A promise to pay. So how does it get its value? Well, it depends upon the quality of the people who make the promise, of course. And the government gives the best promise of all, because they make these things. In fact, they make all our money. Nobody else can make money. You can have a bank lend you money, but they don't make the actual pounds. The pound is created by the government. And the government's promise, in the case of the UK, is worth, literally, £10 for £10. And why is that? Well, they will take your money in exchange for the taxes that you owe them. And that's vital. They insist that you pay your taxes using pounds. You can't pay it using euros, you can't pay it using dollars. You can try to, and they'll just transfer that money into pounds before they make the settlement. So you don't really pay in anything else. You always must pay in pounds. And because they insist that we pay our taxes in pounds, we have to basically trade in the UK in pounds, because otherwise we'd have an exchange rate risk every time we had to pay our tax. So we don't use another currency. Only pounds are acceptable in the UK. And that's because of this literal promise that they will take our currency in settlement of the tax that they demand from us. So bizarrely, and very few people realise this, tax is what gives your money its value, because that fulfills the promise to pay. They'll take your money in exchange for your taxes. But this idea is really important. First of all, it means 
that the government can never run out of money. It can create as much money as it likes. And all it has to do is tax it out of existence again to stop inflation happening. But let's go a step further. The government licenses banks to lend money with its permission. Nobody else can undertake a lending operation called a bank without government permission. So they basically operate on the government's behalf. And when they lend out money, it is, of course, government created money. It's the pound. The banks don't have their own currencies, including in Scotland and Northern Ireland, where they print their own notes. They're still English, effectively Bank of England pounds in that sense. And as a result, every single pound is created by the government. And all of it backed up by that promise to pay and nothing else. So when you wonder what gives your pound value, it's the taxes that you pay. And when you understand that, you realise that, first of all, tax is really important. And secondly, tax is what controls inflation. Because unless we taxed pounds out of existence, we'd have inflation. And thirdly, it puts government completely in control of the money system. And that makes a nonsense of something else. There's no such thing as taxpayers' money in that case. Because all money is made by the government. You can use their money, but they can never use yours because they made it in the first place. Everything turns upside down when you understand that money is a promise to pay given its value by tax. And this is a theme we're going to come to again and again in this series of videos. I'm Richard Murphy. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, click the subscribe button below and there'll be other videos on this theme. Follow me on Twitter at Richard J. Murphy. Look at my blog, Tax Research UK. Thanks a lot.